morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's glad to be here in the house of the Lord. Glad to see you all. Welcome to Square One. I want to invite everyone to stand up. We will sing our opening song. It's a new song. Let's sing it uh, together. Let's learn it together. Let's give thanks to the Lord.
in the prison door, he fought in the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your sacrifices. Thank you for the cross that you have bore in church for our sin. Thank you, Jesus.
You are truly worthy of our praise, O oh God. You are truly worthy of our praise. Church, if you have the Holy Communion in your hand and you're welcome to lift up the bread. This is not something that we just do each and every month. Um, it just reminds me when the early church doing the breaking bread and, 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 and gathering together in houses. This is something that they do, that they did daily. So with that being said, let's not take this moment for granted. This is the promise of Jesus, that this is his body, and he will be in us, and we are in him. So you're welcome to lift up the bread. For I receive from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took the bread, and then he had given thanks, and he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Church, if you believe that this is the body of Christ, it's been sacrificed on the cross to pay for the sin of the world, including your sin and my sin. If you believe that, you may eat it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. May lift up the cup in your hand. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Church, if you believe that this cup in your hand is the blood of Christ, the blood that's been poured out from the cross to wash away the sin of the world, including your sin and my sin, and not only that, this is the blood of Christ that has the power to transform your life. This, this blood of Christ has, has the power to give us life. This is the blood of Christ that has the power to heal us, to restore our life, to renew our life. And if you believe all of that, you may drink it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And at this moment, we're going to pray for our children before they go into their class. <laughs> Come on, would you join me in the prayer for them? Father God, we thank you. Thank you for Melody, Mida, Jen, Nolan, and Sebastian. Thank you, Lord, for each and every one of them. We thank you that you love them so much. We thank you that your promise is true on them. We thank you that you allow them to get to know you in their early years. We just pray, Lord, that your guidance, your wisdom, and your love and your mercy and your favor will follow them for the rest of their life. Thank you, Lord. Give them a, a vision. Give them a dream that comes from you. Give them a dream for your kingdom. There is bigger than the previous generation. And we also want to pray for the parents. Thank you for the honor that we get to walk alongside with them, that we get to be their parents. Help us, Lord, to continue to uh, help them to get to know you. Help us, Lord, to raise them well. And we also want to pray for each and every teacher in this church for the kids and we thank you Lord thank you for their investment and their faithfulness thank you for the time that they're investing in the life of these children you bless them oh Lord you bless their ministry and we truly believe everything that they do will not come back in vain we thank you Lord bless our worship service this morning we truly believe that you are in the midst of us we truly believe that you are ready to speak to each and every one of us. We love you. And in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name we pray. All of us say amen, amen. Hey guys, we're going to take...
five minute breaks. If you see somebody that you didn't know, please say hi to them. And then we'll come back in this room in five minutes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Is, of course, of course. It is so excited to see you all. Good morning. For those of you who are still outside, I want to invite you to come in. We're about to get started. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are energized with the one hour extra sleep last night. Uh, thank you to the worship team. You guys sound amazing. Thank you for leading us in worship week in and week out. So, um, it is so good to see you all. Uh, welcome to the month of November. Uh, it's hard to believe that we almost, um, it's been almost a year since we moved to this new place. So, we move in exactly in, on January 2023. So, uh, well, anyway, we have a couple of announcements uh, and Claire is going to announce uh, something. So, please welcome Claire. Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, just want to make a quick announcement for those who of you who are, who are new here. Um, we're going to do a um, Samaritan's project, which is the Operation Christmas Child. And for those who have not, I mean, we have the option to donate. So if you can donate, uh, donate really quick because um, we're going to start shopping next week, next Saturday on the 11th of November. So you can um, just open the envelope that's right in front of you or behind you, and then you can donate money. Uh, um, it's up to you how much. It doesn't really matter. And then um, you can uh, write in the envelope um, for the shoe box for specifically. Okay? And um, you can also grab the boxes in the entrance as well. Um, you can give it to your family. Again, the boxes are um, $10, $15 uh, worth of items. So thank you, guys. And, and the last date is the, um, November 19th. Thank you. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. So November 19 will be next week and yeah, then the really following quick. week yeah. after that. Wow, wow. Yeah, it's so we really quick. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, guys, so uh, make sure, just like what Claire says, if you have any additional questions, just uh, come up to Claire after a uh, service and she will give you uh, more explanation and answer your question. And other than that, um, you know, just we encourage you to follow our social media, Square One Church, Facebook, Instagram. We also have YouTube. All of our, our messages is uploaded in, on the YouTube channel. Um, that's the easiest way for us to connect. And then for those of you uh, who would like to join us in the serving team, uh, you're welcome. Uh, just let us know. Uh, there's many different areas where you can serve. We always, uh, uh, we need you, right? Um, so please uh, let us know. Uh, and other than that, let me, let me pray and then we're going to get started um, uh, with our message series. Let's pray together. Dear our Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, for this amazing, amazing morning. We love you, Lord, and thank you for gathering us here together. And in the next few minutes, just we ask you that you will uh, speak to each and every one of us. Uh, we want to have a receptive heart. We want to open up our heart uh, so that you can speak to us. Uh, we are ready to be transformed uh, by your words, Lord, and... Um, also help the, 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 the speaker who will um, relay this message to uh, the church today. Uh, we know without your help, without your anointing, without your presence, Lord, that I cannot really do anything. So we thank you for that. Speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. All of us say So some times ago, I was reading this article um, about this uh, individual who got into an accident, and then part of the uh, part of his brain that will send a signal to be cautious, yeah, to be cautious, has been damaged, has been injured, right? So as a result, basically, to make a long story short, this research is saying that it is not safe for this person to. Uh, be alone, right? Uh, because again, that part of the brain, and um, you're welcome to um, 
uh, display the, the, the picture that I have. Uh, part of the brain that, again, send a signal, hey, to be careful, to be cautious, right, has been damaged, right? So they did an experiment to this patient where they would put a, a poisonous snake in front of him, and then he will try to grab that snake. And then he would, uh, they would uh, uh, do another experiment where they pretend to rob him, you know, while he was walking at night in the, uh, by, uh, at the park, right? And then the, ver the following night, the very next day, this guy would walk, would go through the same street and the same park at night, right? So the conclusion is that, you know, it is not safe for this person to be alone. Now, today... We are starting a brand new series that I title Fearless. When it comes to fear, this is what I believe. Fear is part of our emotion, right? It's human being emotion. And, and, and um, our emotion come from God. So with that being said, I think fear is not always bad. A little bit of fear is actually good for us, right? Fear is good because, again, it, it gives us the ability to, to uh, kind of predict to, to anticipate, right? That's what a little bit fear, you know, a little bit fear is good uh, because it allows us to make the right decision, right? A little bit of fear kept us from making stupid or, or foolish decision, right? Uh, a little bit of fear kept us uh, walking in the dark place at night by ourselves, right? A little bit of fear kept us running into a burning building. Um, a little bit of fear tell us to be cautious when we crossing the street. So a little bit of fear is good, but too much fear is definitely not good, right? Because too much fear, it will paralyze us just when we want to do something. It, it cripple us, right? It stress us out. It, it, it makes us depressed. It makes us anxious. Instead of spending our energy to think creatively and to be productive, we use our energy to worry, right, uh, and, and living in fear. So if you ask me, Sam, so is it good or is it bad to have fear? And the answer is yes, right? I, I'm, you know, um, what I'm saying again, like a little bit of fear is good. Fear is part of our emotion, but uh, too much fear is not good for us. And what I'm trying to say is that basically there's a difference between having fear and living in fear. So in this series, for the next four weeks, we are going to talk about different fears, that, the, the most common fears that we all experience. Um, on, on the last week, Pastor Bobby is going to be talking about one of the most popular fear that we actually have a saying. Uh, anybody want to take a guess what kind of fear out there? Huh? FOMO, fear of missing out, right? Even our culture have the saying for it. So Pastor Bobby going to talk about that on week four. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, in the weeks to come, fear of not having enough. That's the real thing, right? You know, with everything, it is so expensive nowadays, right? Of course, when, you know, fear of not, uh, not having enough is a real thing. Um, and then I'm still trying to, uh, you know, debating whether I want to talk about fear of not mattering or, or fear uh, of being unknown, Right? I think this is the reason why we love celebrity, we adore celebrity, we love social media, right? because you know, we all want to be known. Right? We want our life to matter. Right? Fear, of, fear of not mattering is real. So again, I'm not sure in which order that we're going to be talking about all of those. But today, though, we are going to talk about this one fear, the fear of unknown. Right? The fear of unknown. When you think about how things going to turn out, when you think about tomorrow, when you think about the future, any of you feel nervous, right? Any of you fear, uh, uh, feel like, you know, uh, what's going to happen tomorrow, right? Do, do you get nervous just thinking about the things that's going to happen? Because we don't know. The Bible says this. Since no one knows the future, who can tell someone else what is to come? Hey, since no one knows the future, then who's going to tell us, who's going to warn us what's going to happen tomorrow, right? With everything that you see in the news, the war around the world, right? Uh, the, 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 the crime in our city, right? The economy, the job, you know, our 
future husband, a future wife, who am I going to marry, right? What's my family going to look like? What my marriage is going to look like? Just a lot of unknown, right? What is the doctor report going to say, right, about my health? How, you know, how long my family, my mom, my dad are going to be around, right? Any of you, just the fact that I'm mentioning all of that started to get anxious and nervous, right? Because the fear of unknown is real, and we don't know, we cannot predict tomorrow and the future. One of the first book that I, I, I read as a Christian, this was about 20 years ago, uh, the title is Fearless. The author says this, oh man, it's only life, you know, if only life like, um, you know, like we order coffee, right? I, I imagine if life, we can, we, can, we can design life or we can plan life like we are ordering coffee according to the author. He says this, you know, give me a tall, an extra hot cup of adventure, cut the dangers with two shots of good health, or give me a decaf brew of uh, longe longe how do you pronounce it? longevity, longevity, please, with a sprinkle of fertility, go heavy on agility and cut the disability. Let me get a cup of mocha with extra stirring of indulgence and make sure it's consequences free. I'll go with a grande happy latte with a dollop of love sprinkled with Caribbean retirement, right? Man, take me to that coffee shop, right? <laughs> If only we can have the assurance about tomorrow, right? If only our plan is set, like, hey, you know what? Here's where I'm going to go for high school, and then this is the major that I'm going to take in college, right? And as soon as I graduate, it, there's going to be companies that are lined up that's looking for me so that I can have a job with this amount of salary, right? I will have this much money in my bank account by the age of 25, uh, right? I will marry the love of my life by the age of 30, right? I will live in this neighborhood when I buy a house, right, I will have this amount of money when I retired. If only life is as certain as all of those, right? But the truth is the future doesn't always happen like what we plan, right? Life handed us a lot of turns, a lot of uphills, a lot of um, unwanted stress, right? A lot of transition, modification, alternation, a lot of surprises. You know, some of those surprises are exciting, it's good. But some of them are not so much, right? One day we will, we, you know, we plan about our future. Well, this is the company that I'm going to work in for the next several years, right? This is how much money I'm going to save while I'm working in that company. And the next day, a new CEO got introduced. Changes are coming, guys, right? There's going to be some layoff in this company. Some people are going to be let go, right? So what do we do? What do we do? The fear of unknown is real. How do we face this fear of unknown, right? Now, the question is, should we just plan, uh, stop planning things altogether, right? Why would we plan things if life is just too random for us to plan, right? Why would we plan things if, if, if life is just handed us this random cup of coffee, if you will? If life is too unpredictable to plan, right? If life is just going to do whatever it wishes, right? Why do we even bother to plan? Now, the question is, how do we manage this? How do we manage this tension between accepting that we cannot know tomorrow? We don't know the future. But at the same time, we also need to plan for tomorrow. So how do we manage this tension? How do we solve this tension? Now, today, I'd like to take you to this passage. It is written by someone named James. If you don't know James, I'll give you a little bit of background. James is half-brother of Jesus, right? The reason why he's called half-brother is because, you know, Jesus was born from Virgin Mary. Mary was conceived by the Holy Spirit. So technically, uh, uh, James uh, didn't really have the father. They didn't really have a, a dad, right? Joseph is not his biological uh, dad, right? And then after uh, Mary got conceived, the Holy Spirit gave birth to Jesus. And then Mary actually got married to Joseph. 
right? And, and then they have a bunch of kids, and one of them is James, uh, so we call him half-brother of Jesus, right? Now, just like, now, this is the reason why the Bible is so believable, right? Uh, you know, uh, most of us, we're not Bible scholar, we're not, we're not you know, this, you know, this Bible uh, historian or, or professor, right? So a lot of us read the Bible through the lens of regular people, just like you and me. Now, this is the reason why the Bible is so believable, because James, he didn't believe Jesus is the son of, son of God until after the resurrection. As a matter of fact, when Jesus was going around and healing people and, and, and teaching people, right, Jesus' siblings, including James, is actually, when, when Jesus uh, declared that he's the son of God, you know, uh, Jesus' sibling, including James, actually called Jesus crazy, it's actually there in the gospel, in the Bible, right? And then, of course, just like many other people, including James and including other disciples, after Jesus resurrected from the dead, everybody goes like, okay, now we believe you, right? You died for three days and then you come back to life, right? Okay, now we believe you. Now, anyway, after the resurrection and after the birth of the church, James actually become the leader of the church in Jerusalem. Now, the reason why it is important for me to just tell you that context, that he's the leader now in the church of Jerusalem, right? It tells us something about the character or personality traits of James, right? I mean, it's not easy to become a church leader in the city of Jerusalem, in the epicenter of all the spiritual activities that's going on, especially for the Jews at the time. So it says something about James, right? If I can make an assumption, this is what, uh, what kind of personality James is. He's uh, this, this type A leader. He has this type A leader personality, right? He, he, he's just, you know, he just has that trait. And, and in the Bible, uh, in the book that we're going to read in just one second that James wrote, you can see what type of author he is. He is very direct. He is very in your face, right? If you ever heard this statement or this verse that says, you know, faith without action is dead. You guess who wrote it? James. He's really in your face type of writer. So, and then the book of James, interestingly, it was written for the Christian who scattered all over the place because of the persecution, Right? These Christians actually were on the run. Now, you would think if you're going to write for those people, you're going to have a little bit of empathy, right? But instead, he, he just, you know, he's very direct. You know, hey, you guys got to have, you, you're going to have to live out your faith, right? If you want to be a Christian, be a real one. So he is really, really direct. Now, we are going to see what he said when he addressed that question that we asked earlier. The tension between planning for our life and accepting that tomorrow or the future is unknown. Let's look it up together. You can follow along from the screen behind me here. James wrote, look here. You who say today or tomorrow we are going to a certain town and we'll stay there a year, we'll do business there and make a profit. James basically telling you, hey, those of you who are like me, says James, you love to plan, right? You actually have a detailed plan about tomorrow. It's, you know, it's very specific, right? Today or tomorrow, you know exactly when, right? We are going to a certain town. You know where to go. I will stay there for a year. You know how long you're going to stay, right? You even predict the result. Well, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna start a business and we're going to make a profit, right? For those of you who are like me, James says, type A leaders, know exactly what you want. Very future-oriented, goal-oriented, detail-oriented, planner, Right? I want to hit the brake for just one moment, says James. And then he asks, I think it's very difficult for James to accept this question. And he asks this question to you and me. For those of you who are planning all of this, how do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? It, I think I just assume that it's very difficult for James to admit this reality, right? But we had to admit it anyway. What's going to happen tomorrow? I don't even know. I don't even know what's going to happen tonight, right? Because life 
It's not certain. Life is not like math problem when you add 2 plus 2 is always equal 4. Life is not like this uh, code that you write, right? It's not like coding when you write this code and you execute it and then this is what's going to happen, right? There are just too many variables in life for us to guarantee what's tomorrow look like. And then if that's not enough, James added, your life is like, it's like the morning fog, right? It is here a little while, then it's gone. It's like a mist. It's here a little bit, and then it's gone, right? Besides, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We cannot guarantee what's going to happen tomorrow. Let me remind you, life is short, he says. James, you know, <laughs> it is so depressing, James. I mean, I think, I, you know, I think for James to, 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 to be faced with the, this reality is also depressing for him too. Because he is someone who likes to plan, who's very detailed. He's a, a type A leader, right? Now the question is, what do we do? Right? Should we not just plan anything at all? Why would I bother to think about tomorrow if life is just too random for me to, do, to plan anything? And James says, you know, I'm glad you asked. You know, I'm not finished. What you should say, James says, what you ought to say is this. If the Lord want us to, we will live and do this or that. There you go. That's the answer. If the Lord is willing, if God want me to, then this is how I'm going to plan my life. I will live here and I will do this and that. What James is saying is, is, hey, go ahead and make a plan, right? Hey, go ahead and make a detailed plan for your future if you want to, for your tomorrow, for your life. The when, the where, the what, the who. It's perfectly fine, James says. But just don't leave out one most important factor in your planning. It's God, right? Many people left out God. Many people left out the most important part as they are planning for their life. It's God, right? Now, how can we live him out? Now, here's the thing. I think if we have the awareness that God is sovereign over all things, including my life and my future, God is sovereign over all things, everything that happened, right? If we're aware that God is actually, He lives outside of our time. He is the Alpha and He is the Omega. He is the, the first. He is the beginning and He is the end. In other words, He's already there in our tomorrow. He's already there in our future, right? If we have that awareness that God is good, loving, merciful, and gracious, then it's become easier for us to surrender our tomorrow our fear of unknown right in other words this is what we should say god this is my plan this is what i have in mind right if this is your will it'll be awesome it'll be great but if this is not your will i know you are omniscient you are all knowing i know you are omnipotent you are all powerful it is as simple as that and yet i know it is not that simple and james continued he says if we don't factor in god in our planning said that you are boasting about your pretentious plan about your own pretentious plans and all such boasting is evil remember what i said about james he's very direct he's very in your face type of person he's very straight up right what he's saying is that many people plan their life like God doesn't exist. Many people plan their life like they are God, like they are all-knowing, right? Many people plan their life like they can guarantee tomorrow. And, and, and James said, that's boasting. That's pretty arrogant feeling that you are in control of tomorrow. And then he said, remember, it is a sin to know what you ought to do and then not to do it. James kind of circled back and, you know, uh, and, and James kind of know what some of the people are thinking or, you know, I know some of you are thinking, okay, so, you know, I'm not going to make a plan at all then, you know, why would I make a plan if, if, if I, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow? And James says, remember, it's a sin that you, when you know what to do, but you don't do it. In other words, what James is reminding us, just because you don't know what tomorrow brings, just because there's a lot of unknown in the future, 
we shouldn't use that as an excuse of being irresponsible with our life. So that's what James take on the tension of how to solve between making a plan and then accepting that the future is unknown. And let me close with a couple of things here. And hopefully this will give you some uh, practical things to, for you to understand and uh, the message of hope and the encouragement for you. In regard of the fear of unknown, planning for the future and stuff, right? Number one is this. And I think you know this, but I'm just going to mention it anyway. And I think when we talk about the fear of unknown, the future, tomorrow, it is not so much about our plan. It is not so much about, I've got to make sure I have a perfect plan, right? I've got to make sure I have a crisis-proven plan for my tomorrow. I think it's not so much about all of those. But I think it's more about knowing who you can trust, right? I, I want you to imagine this for a moment. Imagine if you are going to climb Mount Everest, right? Is Mount Everest and Himalayan the same? Yeah? Oh, okay, I didn't know. <laughs> Google it, okay. Imagine you're going to climb that mountain. Imagine you're going to take a trip to the uh, forest of Amazon in South America, right? Now, having a good plan is important. Having, uh, you know, to have the right equipment is important. But I would say, you, know, you might disagree, but I would say having the right person, the expert, the one who know the way around is probably most important, right? As you and me face the unknown, what if you and me just learn to place our faith in God, just trusting Him, right? And God just says, you know, trust me. When you, I know there's a lot of things. I know you don't know a lot of things about your tomorrow, but trust me. Go ahead and make a plan, but trust me, God says, right? You know, I care about you. I want to be involved in your tomorrow. You can trust me because I am invested in you and in your tomorrow, God says, Right? I think if we realize that we actually live under the umbrella of God that's called the will of God, if we acknowledge that, that our plan actually fall within the larger and controlling reality called the will of God, right? I think we wouldn't be worried so much about having a perfect plan for our life, Right? Just realize that whatever that we plan, whatever that we're thinking about is fall under the umbrella called the will of God. Uh, the, proverb, uh, the book of Proverbs chapter 16 verse 9 says this, We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. Can you read this together with me? One, two, three. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. Right? If somehow we can realize that, okay, when I come up with this plan for my future, maybe it is God who gives me that plan in the first place in my heart. Maybe it is God who planted the idea in me about how I'm going to plan about my tomorrow. You know, you know St. Augustine, have you ever heard the name of St. Augustine? He says this, pray as though everything depended on God, work as though everything depended on you. I want to tweak that a little bit. This is actually come from Saint Samir, right? <laughs> the, I want to tweak that a little bit. Uh, plan as though everything depended on you, but trust God as though everything depended on God. Oh, that's pretty good, right? Well, yeah, God, yeah. Thank you. It took me like two minutes to come up with that. In other words, hey, make your plan and then submit to God for approval, right? You, you know the saying of like, if God is willing, you know, I hope you know that is not just an empty saying. That's just not, that's just not some accessories in our sentence, right? But God is willing. That's, that's, that's truly, Jesus says this, you know, my food, Jesus says, is to do the will of God. 
what Jesus is saying, my life is all about doing the will of God. Doing the will of God, doing the will of the Father is the fuel in your life and in my life. So as we face the fear of unknown, the first thing that I want, to, I want you to know is not so much again about having a good and perfect plan, right? But it's about knowing who you can trust with your tomorrow. And here's the second one. It's very practical and it's something that I want you to know. I hope you know that it is not so much about the goal that we are trying to achieve, but it is about the journey and the process. You know, again, mm, mm, okay, sorry. <laughs> you know, I think the, the longer I follow Jesus, right, I... I, I, the more I realize that, you know, my relationship with God or this life is not so much about here are the lists that we're supposed to check, right? Here's the checklist that we're supposed to complete. I don't know. Do you realize that, right? Life is not about just the number that you're trying to hit, right? It's not like when you're working as a salesman, right? You're trying to hit a certain target, right? I don't think that's, li that's what life is all about, right? You know... A lot of us, uh, uh, some of us are married, some of us are not married in this room, right? Now, I, I'm married, right? Um, but let me tell you something. If you go into a marriage and you approach your marriage thinking that, uh, you know what, I'm going to change my husband. Here's the list. I want to change my husband or my wife to be like this, 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 and this, right? Now, if you know that couple, ask them, hey, how is your marriage going? There you go. You see some people laughing, you know. You know, that's, I don't know if that's personal experience or I don't know. No, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding, right? It, 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 because marriage is not about that, right? It's not about the checklist. Imagine a parent, right? You have the checklist for your kids. I want my kids to have 4.0 G, uh, GPA. I want, I want him or her go to the uh, best high school in town, go to the Ivy League University. You know, it's, the list is con continuing on. I want him to marry her, uh, marry a certain type of person, right? You know, this is the kind of career that you're going to have. This is who you're going to be. Imagine is that how parents approach their relationship with their kids and ask them how is their relationship going, right? Because it is not about that. Right? And I, when I started to think about all of those examples, marriage, parenting, right, it started to make sense to me that life is not meant to be lived that way. Life is not meant to be like, well, five years from now, this is what I'm going to do, right? Ten years from now, this is how much money I'm going to have. This is the number that I'm trying to, 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 to hit, right? Can we plan? Of course, yes, and you should, and I should. But don't leave out the most important part when you are planning. It's God himself. And I truly believe that our relationship with God is also the same way. Right? He is more interested in the process. God loves to journey with us instead of trying to make you like a finished product. Right? Of course, he would, you know, he, he would shape us. He would try to make us better. He would try to make us more like him. Like, of course, that's what he's doing. But again, he enjoyed that journey so much more than trying to make you a finished product. You know, he enjoyed that daily dependence that, 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 that you have toward him, right? He loved that part. When you go to God and say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about my tomorrow, about my future. I don't know what's going to happen, right? But because I believe you can be trusted, you know what? I'm going to surrender my life and my future to you. He loved that part of the relationship. He loved that part of the relationship when, when, you know, when you come up to him and say, there you go, my plan, God, I guess doesn't work. Right? I guess it's not going to happen. But you know what, God? I know that you have something better for me. I know that you will directing my step toward other things, right? God is not in a hurry to make you to become this person, this finished product. He loves journeying with you. He loves walking alongside with you.
So there are a lot of things that we don't know about tomorrow, about the future. But just know who you can trust. And second, enjoy the journey. Enjoy the journey. Plan as though everything depended on you. Trust God as though everything depended on God. Can I invite you all to stand up and Pastor Bobby going to close in prayer. Amen. How many of you were blessed this morning? If you were blessed, let's all pray together. Let's receive the blessing of the Lord today, this morning, as we lift up our hands together. Church, may the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. The Lord shines His face upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. May the Lord bless you at your workplace, in your studies. The Lord bless your family. The Lord bless your future. And may the word of the Lord that was preached this morning could be something that we can apply in our daily lives today, tomorrow, until we all meet again next week. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for everything. Bless those who are listening at home, Lord God, that they can join us again in the weeks to come. In Jesus' name, God's people say amen. God bless you all. Happy Sunday. See you next week.